What is going on, beautiful people? Today, we are talking about how to spot a narcissist. If you're new here, my name is Lee Hammock. I'm a clinically diagnosed narcissist, and welcome to another episode of the Narcissist Code. So welcome back folks, welcome back, welcome back. This mic, this mic, mic, mic. Um, first of all, I wanna, I wanna thank everybody on YouTube who's doing the, who donating to the uh, the super thanks and the super chats and whatnot on YouTube. I see them all, I truly appreciate it. Y'all helping support the channel. I truly appreciate every single one of y'all. Um, and everybody who joined the channel memberships as well. So shout out to y'all. Um, but yeah, y'all, how do you spot a narcissist? How do you spot one? You know, covert, over. How do you know? That's one of the main questions that I personally get myself, y'all. A lot of people ask me personally, how do I personally spot narcissists? Like, they, like Lee, can you tell if you, do you know if you're dealing with a narcissist? Can you tell if you dealt with a narcissist? Can you tell if you're around a narcissist? And I'm just like, I can tell me personally because I've studied a lot of narcissistic people and I myself am a narcissist. I can, I have to be around them. I have to get a feel for them. You can, sometimes you can tell online, but that's very rare because people can fake, people can fake who they are online. Um, and people can, people can fake who they are in person as well, but it's a little bit more difficult in person. You know, me personally, when I get around people I, that feel narcissistic, I can feel the energy. And I know it's, it's vibe, my intuition, I, like, a lot of narcissists are very intuitive people. My intuition kicks in, y'all. My intuition kicks in crazy. And they'll, and they'll say something or do something that's kind of off-putting for me, and I'll be like, huh, you got something going on. Or, say, or they'll say something that's kind of off the wall that only I would understand. You imagine just like, why do you say that? You know, I'm just always asking questions like that to myself. Like, why would they say that? You know, a lot of covert narcissistic people, y'all, are very analytical people. They're laid back analytical people. That, not, that doesn't necessarily mean that they're introverted, but if you're in a group of people in a meeting or whatever, a, a gathering or something like that, and you see a person that you think might be narcissistic and they're just sitting away from everybody, kind of people watching, studying. You know what I mean? They might be interacting here and there, but they're people watching. They're studying people. Covert narcissistic people study y'all. They analyze. You know, I would say covert narcissists are like the scientists of the narcissistic field, you know, of the narcissistic per personality disorder spectrum. Like they study, analyze people. Like me, I like people watching. I'm watching mannerisms. I'm watching energy. I'm watching how you react, interact with people. You know, if you look at me, things like that, I'm body language. You know, they're looking at body language and things of that nature. So I get the feeling for covert narcissistic people like that. They just kind of don't integrate themselves in the crowds a lot. Some of them do, but not a lot of them. Some of them like, can, can be very introverted and whatnot. I just get a reading from covert narcissistic people. I just, it just feels weird. You know, they'll say something off the wall. They just, they'll say something that makes it feel like that they are trying to separate themselves from the crowd, so to speak. You know, they'll say something that makes it, that makes it seem like they're special. Or something like that, you know. Like nobody else will understand them unless you have this, unless you, unless you are them. You know, you can't understand them unless you are them. You know, they'll say something. They, they typically try to put the other people down in subtle, controlling ways, in subtle ways, passive aggressive ways. Nothing like very rarely would they be. I mean, they can get that way, but rarely would they be like super, like aggressive. They pushy and things like that. Very rarely would they do that. They're very, it doesn't happen like that. Um, but covert narcissistic people tend to be very analytical. Just kind of stay away from the crowd. On the outs outside looking in. They, they, they're still on the inside, but they're on the outside of the inside looking in. Covert narcissists try to be the center. I hope this makes sense to y'all. Covert narcissists try to be the center of attention without being in the center of the attention sphere. You see, like covert narcissistic people are on the outside of the spear. Like they're, they're inside the circle, right? But they're further from the center, but you notice them. It's not peacocking, but you notice them. They stand they stand out in a very unique way. You know, but so you notice they the center of attention without drawing attention to themselves in an unnecessary way, like in a loud, boisterous way, you know? Can some do that? Yeah, some of them can do that, but a lot of them draw attention to themselves by standing on the outside looking in. You know, so if you're in a group setting or a workplace and things like that, and you see somebody being the center of attention, but not trying to be the center of attention, like outside looking in type stuff, 
you know, they c- c- kind of outside control of the narrative, they might be narcissistic. I'm not saying that there's a guaranteed sign that because you're an outsider doesn't mean that you're a narcissist, y'all. But overt narcissists, overt narcissists try to be the center of attention by being in the center of the attention sphere. Loud, boisterous, best dress, best cars, best, cl- like, the best of everything, especially the malignant ones. Like, Super drawn attention to themselves, loud, out, just unnecessarily loud, charming, charismatic, fun, outgoing, and things like that. The covert narcissist can be fun, charming, outgoing, and things like that, but it's just more on a covert level where you're not yelling and screaming, drawing attention to yourself. My malignant narcissist friend literally would yell to draw attention to himself, you know, and that attracts people to them. It's wild because people don't find yelling, loud, annoying people, obnoxious people attractive to a lot of times. But sometimes it just draws you in, you know. That's the difference. That's how you spot a narcissist in a crowd. But, you know, it just in a real life, in a dating situation, just listen to how they talk, y'all. If you're just getting to know somebody, listen to how they talk. First of all, trust your intuition. Your intuition is there to protect you. But listen to how they talk. Like, are they, are they at the dinner table, the first date, or just meet when you meet them at work or whatever this place is? Are they making themselves seem like they're the most important person in the room, the more most important person around, more important than you already? Like you just getting to know this person. They have this grandiose sense of self importance, or like, are you getting to, like? Do they think that they're more important than you just because they were born a certain type of way? You know, ask yourself that question right there. Also, ask yourself: Are they super delusional? Is this person extremely delusional? Are they like, like have delusions of grandeur? Are they are they living in a fantasy world where they think you know the world is out to get them? Or they super conspiracy theory oriented? Or they you know it's just a wild type of dynamic? You know. But if you already, if you're just meeting them and you feel like they need you to constantly praise them, you get into know, you get into know them. They feel like you, you feel like they need your compliments. Like they thrive on your compliments. If you don't compliment them, they get angry. Oh, so you don't, you don't like this shirt? What, what do you mean? If you didn't, you didn't compliment me on it. So I'm assuming you don't like it. Stuff like that, you know? Or you don't like how I do my job? It, 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 just, just be on the lookout for how they talk about themselves. Like if they need, are always in the need of consistent validation and admiration and things like that. You know, it's just like, again, y'all, if you're just getting to know somebody as well, these are these are telltale red flags right here. Watch how they treat people, not just you. Watch how they treat other people. Y'all, if they're mean or if they're unnecessarily, if you're on a date and they're unnecessarily mean or rude to the wait staff or the, the Uber driver or the cab driver, the cashier, the waiter, the waitress, the bartender, if they're just unnecessarily just putting people down because they're in the service industry like y'all run far away from that person but i know people are like well sometimes people are just frustrated and you never know what they're going through you can get them a second third fourth chances if you want to but the more chances if somebody messes up on the first date or the second date like the more chances you give them the more they're going to course correct their behavior just enough to manipulate you you know so if they act this way up front assume this is the way that they're going to be like if they're acting this way, assume this is how they're going to be. This is who. They, this is how they are. This is how they're going to consistently act. If they are already acting this way, you know, I don't. Th- it just makes mo- it makes sense. Like I say, if you see them, like, like if another red flag, y'all, if they're talking about their exes up front, they're talking. If they're just unnecessarily bashing, beating down their ex, just in front of you, and y'all, it, it, for no reason, like y'all, I'm just telling you. Be very, be on the lookout. Bolo, this is how you spot them right here. If they're just, does talking bad about your ex make you a narcissist? No. It's the context that absolutely matters in these situations, you know? So if you're dealing with a toxic narcissistic person, it really is the context of why they're talking bad about their ex. Why they, if they, especially if they keep talking bad about their ex. If, they, if their ex is always on their mind, well, you know what people say nowadays, if their ex is living in their heads rent free, then y'all, you are going to be living in there too. Like you have a third person in your apartment or your house when y'all move in together because they're still focused on their ex. You know, their ex is living in their head rent free. So in essence, they're living in your apartment or your house rent free as well. So it's just like, if you get deal with a person that's still obsessed with their ex, that might be a narcissistic person. You know, that might be a narcissistic person. But you also get into this space where, you know, a lot of times, one of the easiest ways to spot a narcissist, y'all, is to ask them. You know, 
there's there's a narcissist question. It's, it's called a narcissist question, and it says, "To what extent do you agree with it? To what extent do you agree with this statement on a one to ten scale?" You know, I am a narcissist, and a lot of people who are narcissists, y'all will tell will, will not try to downplay narcissism. Like they'll be like, well, everybody has a little narcissism. You know, like everybody's narcissistic. Some of us are just higher narcissists than other people. You have to be narcissist to be successful. Some of them will openly admit to being a narcissist under the right type of context. If you're not paint, if you're not painting it in a villainizing way, then some of them will absolutely admit to it. You know, admit to it up front. You know, but you do have to trust your intuition in these spaces right here, y'all. It really, you really do have to trust your intuition in these spaces because if you don't. That's when you end up you end up getting caught up, you know. This trust yourself. Like if you're dealing with a person and you're just getting to know them, like another way to spot them, y'all short. So a lot of some narcissists are short tempered. Like if they're super short tempered, and not like when I say short tempered, it doesn't mean it doesn't always just necessarily mean that they're going to yell and scream at you. Short tempered can also mean they they give you the silent treatment or with re, with re, re, retreat within themselves. They refuse to just talk to you and deal with the issues or deal with the problems. That is also super red flaggy right there, y'all. It just is. And I know some people are like, but it's not, believe this, we got people, people deserve more chances than y'all. Y'all can give people as many chances as y'all want to, but you gotta realize you only get one life to live. Don't waste it giving the wrong person multiple chances when they absolutely do not deserve it, you know? But anyways, y'all, I hope y'all enjoyed this video. If y'all have any, any other ideas on how to spot a narcissist, let me know, let me know. Yo, drop them in the comment section, help everybody out. Peace. Thank you so much for making it to the end of my video. You are a mental healness rock star and I appreciate you for being here. If you haven't already, make sure to click on the screen to subscribe to the channel and watch another one of my videos on my playlist. There's also a link available up here for you to purchase my kids, but remember it's not your fault on Amazon. So check that out. Thank you. I will see you in the next video. Peace.